The man dude comes from a family of outdoor enthusiasts, and I myself, having been born and raised in the concrete jungle, had only one association with forest and woods, which is getting murked by serial killers and finding buried dead bodies. That's of course thanks to growing up and watching way too much America's Most Wanted. I had also never been exposed to extreme sports until his family invited me for a snowboarding vacation in Park City, Utah. Ciao everyone, Ariel here, and today in the kitchen we're keeping it real with a soul warming, hearty, slow cooker chili and the story of this novice New Yorker's first time snowboarding. As usual, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna tell you my story, so if you want the detailed recipe with explicit instructions and behind the scenes parts of the story that I don't have time to share with you in the video, sign up for my newsletter linked through my website right down below in the description box. Let's get started. So the man dude's family generously for my first time arranges for me to have a lesson. And I'm so grateful to them because I've, as I said, not been exposed to this particular sport. And I've been told by them that the learning curve is about three days and involves a lot of falling on your ass. So they set me up with the lesson. I'm out there in the morning. It's a beautiful, crisp, clear day. I'm like, oh, wow, gorgy, gorgy, gorge. Morning, morning, morn. I'm noticing the scenery and I'm listening to the instructor and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And I'm starting to get the hang of this thing that you're doing where you're shifting the weight from one side to the other in order to stay upright. And I'm kind of taking in the beauty. Of course, it occurs to me much later when I'm uh, actually like a snowboarder that I have barely scratched the surface of what's beautiful about where we are. Like the bunny slopes, little crowded, not really taking in the best of the scenery. A lot of little kids on the bunny slopes, thus the name. Anyway, not the kids aren't cute, but some are like snotty nosed, especially when it's cold. Anyway, so we're out there, it's fun, the instructor's teaching us. I'm really beginning to feel the hang of it. I'm starting to link my turns. Things are going well. So the one very crucial thing that the instructor, I'm starting to cry, failed to teach us was how to stop. I'm assuming because she did not think in any kind of short-term lesson like a morning set of hours, we were gonna need to know that skill. We weren't, I don't think in her mind, gonna get very far with the skills that we did have, which were very, very few. But nonetheless, we were not instructed on how to stop the snowboard. That was not taught to us. I've got some black beans and kidney beans, but you could make them from scratch, no probs. Okay, so. The instructor sets out to help some poor butt-throbbing soul who has not gotten the hang of the linking of the turns yet, and I set out to practice. And I'm off to a great start, perhaps a little too great. Essentially, I start linking my turns. I'm falling down, but I hit this stride where I start kind of at the top of the slope. One link, two link, three link, four link, I'm starting to feel extremely exhilarated by this, but I'm also beginning to gain an alarming amount of speed. I'm panicking because I am flying at this point, linking turns down the bunny slope, headed straight for this woman and young child. I am panicked. I do the only thing that I could possibly think to do. Rendered speechless by the fear of what's about to happen, I start whipping my hand around my head, going woo, 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 like this, as I'm just headed straight for them, okay? I barrel directly into them. He goes flying in the air, and like an elliptical pattern like that. She goes flying in the air. I am stunned on the ground having had what was essentially my first human crash. She storms over to me, like hobbling with like one foot in the board. I don't know if anyone has snowboarded out there, but it's like one foot has to be attached. And in order for you to move on the land, if you're not on the board itself, one foot is detached. So she's like, looks like she's like, um, it's basically like imagine your two feet coming in like that and being like completely pigeon toed. So she comes over and she's angry and she's, you know, everybody's got goggles. I'll have to show you some photos. And she's like, are you in a lesson? And I was like, Yes, I like whimper essentially. And she was like, good, stay there. And then runs off, not runs, she, she hob no toes away. <laughs> and then she turns around to me, she goes, she could have broken my leg. I mean, you wanna talk about upset? Yeah, if I had known how to stop, I would have done it. Okay, these are getting nice and sauteed. 
Beautiful. Love that. At this point, we want to add all those beautiful spices. I'm mortified. Okay. I'm so mortified. I like, like, it's like me walking over to the, uh, the lift to get back up to the top of the bunny slope. I'm like, da, na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Do you guys know the Charlie Brown sad, sad face walk, walk song? Okay. Those are nice and smelly. I'm going to add my two kinds of meat. You could do vegetarian if you wanted, but I had these, so I'm using them. I've got ground beef and turkey. It's getting hot in the slow cooker, so watch your forearm when you're sauteing in your meat and you don't want to get yourself burned. I want to do this until there's no pink. I don't want it to be fully cooked, but I want the pink to be out of there. So it's lunchtime at the lodge. Everyone is gathered around the table with steaming bowls of cafeteria chili. And they want to hear from me. How did it go? What was your experience like? Did you like it? Can you walk? Are you stiff? And so I tell my story of what happens on the mountain, of course. And they're listening and they're like, they're classic Southern style. They're just quiet. They're, they're laid back. They're listening. They're taking it in. They have no comment yet. I have learned and I did learn then that they're always thinking things, but they're not necessarily going to tell you in the moment. And so I finished my story and the man dude's dad kind of waits a pause and, you know, I've, I've run through all the detail and then I'm like, I start, I'm sirening, woo, woo, and I'm letting her know, woo, panic, there's something happening, I'm coming, I'm going to hit you. And he says, you know, she may have thought that you were daredeviling down the mountain, like whooping for joy. And I was like, what? Isn't the universal sound of distress a siren? And he was like, in New York. And I was like, ah. So those ingredients are all in there. I'm going to give this a cover. <coughs> Make sure that I switch my setting to slow cook and set my timer to six hours. And now I'm going to get my garnishes ready so that when that's finished, we can just manja manja. In honor of that first day snow burning on the mountain, I am making chili, a heartwarming, nutrient-dense version in the slow cooker, which makes it chronic illness friendly. As you know, you kind of dump all those things in there and just let it roll. I'm going to get these uh, garnishes figured out nice and fresh scallions chopped down on the diagonal so they look really pretty. And I want to dedicate this episode to my in-laws, the man dude's parents, who without their very, very helpful and supportive generosity, never, ever would have gotten me onto the mountain. And the man dude can thank them also because it became a sport that I truly grew to love and enjoy and succeed at more or less. Even though for the rest of that day, anytime someone came within 20 feet of me, I just immediately dropped to the ground and continued to batter my coccyx bone into probably what was a small fine powder floating around down there that needed to be reassembled later by the magic of the body's ability to heal itself. That is an extremely long sentence that just randomly came out of my mouth. Those are all chopped. I'll see you in six hours. Here for my condiments, I have some scallions, some shredded cheddar cheese, totally optional if you're dairy sensitive and you don't want that. Actually, this looks like sour cream, but it's yogurt, just as tart. It's a Greek style, so nice and thick. And I know you saw in the middle I had the idea to put some green pepper in. I like a bright green crunch in my chili, so I like to save a little bit when I'm chopping that and add that at the end. Okay, I'm going to get some steaming chili into here. Just a little bit because I'm not the hungriest yet, but I will be. Okay. Looks and smells amazing. Mmm. -mm -mm. I was tasting as I went to make sure seasoning was good, so I don't need to do that, but you're going to want to make sure you do. We'll add a little cheddar. Get that cheesy nice, cheesy niceness. What is chili without the scallions? That's usually the green element, right? But I just kind of feel green 
and peppers. And bam! I'm so excited to try this, everyone. I want to hear from you. Are you an extreme sport follower? Do you run yourself ragged into the ground on the mountain for you chronic illness people? And if that's only a digestive disorder, are you a skier or you a snowboarder? Where do you live in the world? Leave me that comment in the section below. I am so excited to have a bite of this delicious, hearty, warming chili in honor of that day on the mountain. I also would like to advise public service announcement and advisory. If you're blessed enough to have your health to ski or snowboard and you find yourself one day on the mountain with someone vaguely sounding like a car siren or an ambulance, get out of the way. If you make this, find me on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see your photos as always. Sign up for the newsletter, get the recipe on the website. You know the drill. Okay, here we go. Mmm, 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 mmm. There are layers of things happening. I'll tell you what, that's no Snow Lodge Mountain Cafeteria chili, y'all. The turkey and the beef make a little bit of light. The beans are obviously cooked because they were from a can, but do them from scratch if you've got the time. The crunch from the peppers and the scallion are adding that little bite. The cheddar is melty. The tang from the yogurt, it's complementing everything. Oh, this is so good. I highly recommend you pair this with some cornbread. Check out that recipe. Mmm. I love y'all. I'll see you next time. Ciao. I'm like, I'm from the concrete jungle. I can follow my ass. I'm, st I'm, I'm scrappy. There was one time much later when I got taken down the mountain in a body bag because I was convinced that I had broken my coccyx. I was like, I can't move another step more. And everyone was like, uh, okay, well then we're calling you an ambulance essentially, which on the mountain doesn't exist. So they have to body bag you and roll you down. It's extremely dramatic. My butt didn't hurt that badly that day, uh, but man, boom, 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 throbbing.